Club. I'm Valerie, we have Renee and Michelle, and uh, we're coming to you live. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Find us, on, of course, on here on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and on uh, Apple Podcasts and other podcasts, whatever you stream your podcast over. So um, happy Saturday. Glad that you're along with us. Don't, you know, we're live, so you can hop in anytime to get questions. Um, but we're answering a question today. Lene, did you want to read it or do you want me to read it or what should we do? Um, I can read it. I'm sorry, I do not know how to pronounce her name. Valerie, you do. Oh, I think it's Marush Marushka. Marushka? Marushka, yeah, Marushka. Hope Marushka. I got that Marushka. correct. <laughs> an SCH in there. I don't know. I would just go with Mo Marushka Christian Hasselmeyer. Okay. Yes. So this um, question was from her. She said, hello, dear people. A question today. I'm curious to know how you manage to stay in your states when the 3D shows you the opposite of what you want repeatedly. Who experienced this and got what they wanted anyway in the end? It's about persisting. I managed to not give up on some wishes that have not yet hardened into facts because I've already manifested a lot of things and believe in the process. But the longer it takes, the more difficult I find to really feel the wish fulfilled. I am still confident, but a bit stuck. I feel the stuckness in my body hurting. I'd be very thankful to read about your real experiences. Thank you. It's such a great question. You know. And we've been there. <laughs> we've all, raise your hand if you've, you know, if you've been there. Oh, oh yeah. You know, you know. But, but I think, you know, as, as I think uh, Marushko knows too, Neville has talked about, you know, it is sure and will not be late. It is sure. So what's yeah. our conception of late or timing? Yeah. You know, it's like, okay, I need, you know, that like somebody who said to Neville or to 2020, you know, I need $250,000 and I need it by, by Friday at, at 6 p.m. Now, while that you can, you know, make, make that happen, while you can make that happen, at the same time, that's not the feeling you want to be like, where is it? Where is it? Mm -hmm. So part of that, I think is also comes from my feeling would be there was what was it some appliance I don't remember if it was a a clock a watch or something that used to have a, a, a back in back in my, my movie that was like set it and forget it I don't know if anybody remembers hearing that you know it's it's like an appliance or whatever set it and forget it yeah and I think with with and, and I'd love to, you know, can't wait for you to jump in on what you feel about that. But I think, I think it's almost like you want to have that desire and then forget that you even thought about it. Yeah. Hmm. Have you ever had that happen with you where you've like had that and then just let it go because you like done? Yeah. And I... I find it funny because this is very similar to my recent experience with going into labor uh, because I, you know, you're waiting for your baby, right? And then I'm like, am I really waiting for the baby? Like, what am I actually waiting for? Because it's all me, right? <laughs> so I got to a point where, you know, I had gone to the doctors and I was, just as dilated as someone who's in active labor, but yet I was walking around not in labor, you know? So it was bizarre. It was like, even my doctor's like, I don't understand what your body's doing. <laughs> I'm like, neither do I. But I realized as I started going to those um, doctor's appointments, I was way too much in my head about it. I was like, oh, this baby's going to be here any day now. And it was like a waiting game. It turned into a waiting game. And then I started getting frustrated because I'm like, why is my body not doing what it needs to do to, so I can have my baby? When I finally accepted that and said, you know what? I am where I am 
and my body's clearly ready, but mentally I'm not allowing that because I'm, I'm thinking, oh, I'm just going to somehow trigger this by my thoughts by going, okay, time to go into labor. You know what I mean? Like when you're trying to control it, like through your mind, like, okay, now it's time. Now it's time. (laughs) Guess what ain't going to happen? Your body's like, "Uh uh-uh, we're shutting down shop. This baby ain't coming out or insert whatever, (laughs) you know, desire. And I tell you that night before I went into labor, I finally, I was like, you know what? It's okay. I, if I have to go another week pregnant, that's just what's going to have to happen. And as soon as I just let it go, let it sit, right? Plugged in the appliance and said, there, just let it sit. It's going to do its thing. Uh, guess who went into labor? The, you know, I went to bed that night like that and I woke up in labor and had my baby in 12 minutes. I mean, it happened fast. <laughs> it was like, okay, boom, you're ready. Uh, so yeah, I mean, and that was, I, I feel like that's a great example because what I didn't realize when we're talking about persistence, because that was kind of what she was getting at in her question, is you don't realize you're actually being persistent in trying to control what's happening. You're not being persistent in having that already. So you're persistent, but you're you don't realize you're persistent in the, I don't want to say wrong, but you're persistent in the not having versus the having. And as soon as you recognize that, and this is a great post because this post would be a great timestamp to say, okay, in this moment, I was being persistent in not having these wishes. Now you can say, ah, I see, I'm being persistent on not having it. So switch gears, switch you gears. Know- you know what this, you know, Lene, and I get, uh, you know, Michelle also has a lot of familiarity with this, either your friends or your family, where, where a couple, how many times have you heard a couple say we were trying so hard to make a baby and then we gave up, Yeah, didn't think about it. We said, well, it was probably never going to happen. And as soon as they did that, bingo. Yep. That happened to my aunt and uncle twice too. They ended up having two babies like back to back because of that. They went through all the in vitro and, you know, tried for years. And now my aunt was in her forties and she's like, well, I'm definitely not. So she just said, I'm, I'm giving up on this desire basically. And sure as shit, like two months later, she's pregnant and then she gets pregnant again, you know? I mean, it's just yeah. amazing. Right. You were kind of pulled back to back on your pregnancy yeah. too, you know? <laughs> Mine was we more, know. I do Players not want are. to get pregnant. I don't want to get pregnant. <laughs> I was very <laughs> persistent in that. And uh, oh, here I am. <laughs> yeah. So so the other part, the other part of, the, of that equation that um, Mariska talks about is where she's feeling, it's like hurting. It's like, yeah. oh, I want it so bad. How many times have we all felt that? Right? Yeah. Time. You know, Michelle, you want to talk about that a little bit? You know what that's been, like any feeling like that for you? When you persist in that way, there is a great sense of desperation, neediness, that you needed it to happen. I go back to this house thing all the time with me because I, 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 I was needy. I was desperate. I really do need a bigger house. Um, there's no four bedrooms around <laughs> um, that I want. There's none. Um, and yet I persist in the desire of knowing that it's already done, but I don't persist in the desperation and the feeling of really needing something and not being able to have it. So I just continue knowing that it's already done. And what's funny is, is as soon as I, it's about the feeling of surrender. And you know, you get that feeling. We've talked about it all the time, just that pit in your belly. It's actually more of, you don't even have to do a feel it real scene. You don't even have to 
sit there and imagine or meditate upon this mm -hmm. or anything. It's just a knowing within you that it is already done. And actually, since I surrendered, Uh -oh. she that. rendered to that yeah. opportunities are you still there yeah so right i got a notification on my phone and it paused me oh. <laughs> um so um i i actually just think that when um so many people want wealth and there is that desperation and there is that neediness and actually you're banking on a certain way of something happening for you which creates which creates that that yearning feeling yeah <laughs> you're so by creating that yearning feeling you get in uh, she's in the state of being stuck but it's also in the state of really wanting something and you're yearning for it you're going to then create more yearning. You really have to find that state of already having it and that you've surrendered to knowing that it's going to happen. So it may not show up tomorrow. It may not show up in three years, but it is going as soon as you know it's done, it will be done. And I remember listening to Jerry because we were to, we had, when we had Jerry and Mika on our show, he was looking for a home. He had no home at all. Yeah. Yet he he surrendered to knowing that he was moving. He moved him and his child and his wife to Hawaii without knowing where they were going to be staying. They had no home, nothing. But he surrendered to the feeling because he said, hey, you've already moved before. This is exactly the same. Yeah. You just don't, you just haven't found your home yet. And now he's found his home and he's actually living as a farmer and he's living the life that he'd already desired, but better because he hadn't decided on the how or put any of the middle shit in. He just now lives that feeling of, and he lived that feeling of home and persisted in that and let go of all the drama because that's actually what it is it's the drama yeah and i i actually i pulled up the definition of persist because what i find is when i actually define a word that i'm using that's where i also like get hung up on the words of something and like doing something right so persist is continue firmly in an opinion or a course of action in spite of difficulty opposition or failure <laughs> so it almost sounds like a struggle by definition mm. if you think about the way that definition is worded so i had a commented on that post and i said you know how are how do you define persistence and I think we should all ask ourselves that, like, what is persistence? Because it's going to look different for me as it does Valerie, as it does Michelle, is how do you define persistence? And does it, like, by your own definition, just subconsciously, it's a struggle automatically when you use that word. So if you think about it, if you're defining it in a way of this whole process that you have to go through, or it's going to be a struggle. You're going to have obstacles. By already having that definition set in your mind, as soon as you say, no, I'm staying persistent in this, well, guess what? Insert that definition and you're going to experience whatever you've defined it as. So I think that would be helpful is to get very clear on how you're defining persistence and change it up. Instead of making it a serious deal, make it fun. And then as soon as you catch yourself, you're like, oh, silly me, silly me, let me just redirect. Well, there, right, there is that, because persistence <laughs> is, is, is about standing firm mm -hmm. in the face of all these things. Uh, so, yeah. so it's, it's 
you can stand firm to the point where your feet, you know, it's kind of like you're standing on the rocks and the waves are crashing over you and you're standing there and you're holding your ground with all, you know, the wind and the rain and the spray and it's all washing over you, but you're, you know, you're like standing there, you know, like Captain Ahab lashed to the rail and, you know, <laughs> got up from Moby Dick. But, you know, but the, but the, the, um, the truth of it is really that persistence can also be just that light feeling. So let's take a look at the famous story about Neville Goddard's father. And that was Victor, the Victor Goddard method that every morning on his way to work when he was young and starting out and, and didn't have a lot of money, he went to a regular nine to five job and he saw this building in Barbados on his way to work and he saw this empty building and, and he would look at this building and he would see like the, the family name on the building and and he just took a few minutes and then on his way back from work he'd stop he'd do the same thing and he did this until this fateful day when an absolute stranger gets in touch with him and says I will buy you this building seemingly out of right. the blue and uh, up comes this person. So the rest is history <laughs> because they made so many millions, of, you know, millions to this day. I mean, it's an incredibly uh, lucrative, all their business holdings. But, but, the, but the key point in that is, he, it's not like he forgot, but he just kind of made this little point about doing that. So that was his persistence. The rest of the day he was attending to business. He probably didn't sit there going, oh, blah, 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 blah. he just like did that. So you could even approach it and do that method with it. You, but you can still stay very light. So in the interim, forget about it. Just put, you know, so many people often say they had that thought and then they forgot about it. Now, Marushka, we know to be someone who is very comfortable generally with manifesting. So it's, and as we all are, we know the, we know the ropes, we know, you know, we've seen it happen. We've seen these little quick things where even someone who's new in the group recently said, you know, I was thinking about somebody, I went into the grocery store, I came in the supermarket, I came out and in the parking lot, someone calls out to me, it's the person I've been thinking about and, you know, that I hadn't seen in like two years. But but where things seem to take, it's just because it got to that point, you know, maybe, you know, it was building up, building up so that when at the point where he, where the person intersected with the unseen reality to have that thought, the person was like on the way, right? Know? So these, these kind of feelings can actually be cooking up in us, but it's only at the point where we intersect with what we want. So there's these kind of little intersection points. So I think if it's something that starts to feel like, why isn't it happening? We've got to always remember that, and I think Anila Reddy in the Vi Project, our friends over there, she and Clay, um, and one of these days, I know Anila will be on with us, I'm sure, um, that, that every moment, <laughs> excuse me, is right, is now, is the yeah. eternal, infinite, That's right, hmm. now, yes. so, so, but it's the idea that there is this extension of time into the future, that something hasn't happened yet, you know, so it's really that you're taking the future, as it seems, you know, and bring it home to the now, and then let go, you know, so that you don't feel this. She says she feels the stuckness in her body. Well, we've all felt that stuckness in the body because it's that ache of where is it? But, you know, it's like, it's like, I know it's hard to put that out of your mind, you know, isn't it? Don't we all find how difficult that is sometimes? I think sometimes too, because she mentioned some things are easy, you know, then she knows she's done it before. Um, I think it's the pressure about size. So yeah, she's size. things. I'm wondering whether she, um, she it's sizable to her. Mm -hmm. The she size matters. So take yeah. a look at our. Um, we have that um, whole episode saying size doesn't matter. Now there is a. I, there, let's be honest. There is a difference in size. 
there's a difference in the size of me wanting a cup of coffee or me wanting to go and plow the coffee bean field and own it. Yeah. <laughs> there's a different <laughs> size. <laughs> However, how you manifest those things is exactly the same. <laughs> size doesn't matter. Right. But see, let's go. I'm just going to go back into her letter, her, into her note for a little bit here. She says, how you manage to stay in your skin. No. But you don't see when the 3D shows you the opposite of what you want repeatedly. But it's not. You don't have to stay in that state. Right. You can check in on it, but you don't have to keep trying to really persist in that state. Dance in some other state. She feels the stuckness in her body like it's hurting. That's right. Hell, you know, yeah. I was so ill. There was no way I felt that I was going to be able to meet you guys. I mean, we were really, we've had this cough, cold and sore throat going around. And I decided yesterday that, no, I wasn't going to be ill. I don't do ill and yeah. I said to you guys I'm gonna wake up from a beautiful sleep and feel totally refreshed mm -hmm. well I admit I still woke up a bit groggy this morning and I had a two-hour sleep this afternoon I didn't even know what time you guys had planned this for because I was asleep <laughs> I woke up and it was five to four in the afternoon which meant I had five minutes to join you guys and here I was so no you can't decide timings and we're talking about how you feel healthy how about you just get past the state of feeling stuck stuck just is a state Stuck is that insane. what would you be doing if your wish for fulfilled? We also do that whole episode. We do two episodes and we've got the manuscript recordings on sale at the Neville Goddard Summit store, all about living in the end. And that really is the key. You just got to live. Persistence is living in the end. You yeah. don't. It's when I said in my comment to this lovely lady, it's about moving is that you've got to keep moving forwards because otherwise you're going to feel stuck. You're going to feel something within your body because you're you're creating a blockage. Well, Just, that's, well yeah, that's right. You create the block. And the worst part of that is that can lead to illness. You don't want the body having right. to deal with a stuck yeah. any kind of stuck emotion yeah. because you know this is where i know this kind of crosses over into the woo of energetics mm. but at the same but at the same time there is energy that moves mm -hmm. and flows through the body and one of the beautiful things about moving in and out of states is it's a dance it's a dance it's a flow Flows. just the way it feels to us you know yes. and also the feeling of thinking about it and going to the end feeling the ah or the relief or the letting go or the you know we've all got our own personal ways of, of expressing that or the woohoo or whatever it is right but so so if we're stuck around that we keep coming back oh the, you know i mean i have something like that going on in my life right now where i could either you know um hit the panic button on it or every time i feel like i'm heading back i say no no that's a stuck state i just move just move, you know, and we want to feel that movement. So even if it means you just go out and dance around, you know, like, like go in your room and put on some music and, and, and dance and move. And in fact, 20, he posted something, a wonderful, beautiful Neville. I hope you, maybe you ladies saw it. And maybe those of you in the audience uh, who are you know, watching this or catching the replay, um, that it was a beautiful talk about, uh, the spiral and the circle and the spiral and 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 this was because of a situation some that 20 was responding to but if you're in that stuck state you're always in that it's the circle it's the it keeps coming around it keeps coming oh, yes. around, right <laughs> but when you're hitting the spiral there's move, there's movement that's going up movement that's going down movements that's on one side the other side this is how neville describes it it's so powerful you know it almost 
goes back to my like my times, you know, when I studied a lot of originally studied Hinduism, the whole what people talk about the Kundalini awakening that anybody out there who's, who's familiar with that, yeah, that lead to great spiritual, powerful boom, the big explosion, and even things that Neville has experienced, which is similar, very much the same thing, comes from that freedom of the thing having the fluidity to move around. I actually I read a. I think it was in Conversations with God by um, Neil Donald Walsh. Yes. Yes, uh, I love that book. In that book, I think it was the first one. And, and this is how I view, well, when I'm having a, a stuck moment, right? I remember, especially when I'm very focused on time. I remember it from that book that time's not linear, Think of like uh, very thin sheets of paper being placed on top of each other infinitely, right? <laughs> so remind yourself, time's not going this way. Time is being slowly stacked on top of each other. And this paper goes very well with this one. And this one goes very well with this one and this one and yes. so on. And if you just stop and like recognize that, that we're not moving forward in this direction. We're just nicely being stacked on top, on top, on top, on top, building, building, building. It almost takes that pressure off of like, oh, okay, I can, <laughs> let me just calm down and just allow the flow of this soft, you know, stacking of the papers and whatever that looks like. Oh, I love that image. That's great. That's, that's, that's really fantastic. So what would we say, you know, to Marishka, let go, you know, have a desire and then don't think about it. Don't even keep, you know, you can check in on it, but how, how do you feel? You know, keep moving, keep playing. What, would I, you, what do you want to add to I think the, the thing for her so that she doesn't remain stuck is before, you know, when we've always said maybe, she has to create that really short little scene. I know I've said before that you don't, when you have a knowing, you don't even have to create the scene. You just create the knowing it's in you already. Mm. But if you create a really short scene of um, whatever her end is, then when she starts to doubt or it creeps up on her, that she goes, she quickly replaces it with that short scene and goes, oh, no, there it is. And then she can move on. And then, as I always remind everybody in, like, every video, is you've already been doing this your whole life. Yeah. So, as soon as you realize that and you go, oh, my gosh, this was just as easy as when I manifested that new job. Or just, you know, just getting a new job. Like, there's a process. The stacks of paper, right? One of the stacks of paper was you applied for the job. Then the next one was somebody called you, you know, like that, right? So whatever this desire is that you have, there's a that process of flow that comes with that. And that's when you know, when it feels choppy, like you're chopping wood to get there, you know, you're, you're getting in the way and trying to control how that happens and being persistent in that, right? <laughs> versus this will the next thing will unfold for me to show me and then I take that step and then the next thing unfolds and I take that step and before you know it you aren't focused on that thing anymore and then boom here it is now it's in your experience for you to experience well yeah. they, that's right so it's a new experience so the, so so the idea is, you know, you don't want your body to get heavy, stuck, yeah. down, worried, you know, because then we start work, then the worry starts to kick in. You believe you haven't done it right. There's a lot of times, and I, I'm, I'm terrible for this, so I will dig up the seed where you are in your end and everything, and you think, well, it's still not calm. So I then believe I haven't done it right. And so then I go dig up that seed and I d try and lay some more. Did I do this right? <laughs> oh, so you know, that. when we when we talked with David Breslow, <laughs> it's like saying, 
Oh my gosh. I, I can't jump anymore. Gravity, freaking gravity is in my way. I can't <laughs> jump. I don't know how to do this. And you're like, you've been jumping. Like you were born and started jumping. Like as soon as you could get your two feet on the ground and, and stable, like, hello, <laughs> nobody had to teach you how to do that. And, yeah. and that's, it, it's, it really is that silly to think like, what do you think? yeah, like we just do this. This is how it is. And that take that pressure off that you have to learn yeah. how to do this. Right. Like, I mean, you know, you're learning how to be conscious about it. Right. And I think you're also learning to be more aware, like the, the mental diet to notice your thoughts. Yeah if you find that they're still becoming overwhelmingly negative or, you know, th that's another, yes. and the subject of another show about negative um, and positive thoughts and another potential <laughs> guest for that. So all I will say today, but um, uh, the, the, you know, that it's, it's, you, you want to start being more aware of it because this is conscious manifesting. So this is the difference. You know, it's like, if, if, if someone said to you, Lene, you've been driving a car your whole life. You know that. But now you're going to have to really figure out your foot goes here for the gas. This is the <laughs> brake. This is, this is how you steer these U directionals. And that's the radio. And that's the, you know, that's the, the plug in for your buds and da 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 da. And you suddenly go, holy. <sighs> you want me to know how to do this? And we suddenly freak out. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, so it's, it's that you just, it's something you, you do, but this case, it's something we've always been doing, but now we're going to start to become, so that's why the doubts creep in because suddenly someone's pointing out to us all the stuff, <laughs> yeah. all the things, all the things. Am I getting all the things wrong or am I getting all the things right, you know, so that I can do this efficiently? <laughs> if they're the things you're doing and they're not right, you'll find out. <laughs> Right, you're gonna find out fast. Yeah, because we've had some experiences among us where something that came up in thought manifested in a way we'd rather have not seen manifest. Yeah. And yeah. and but but it showed us pronto that we needed to revise. Right. You know, um, and a good example of that. I mean, I was just telling y'all that I think like two days ago. Is I think it was. It was at the beginning of the week, I had told Chase, I said, hey, I want you to start, because uh, he does the routine in the morning with the two older kids, getting them off to school. And so I get to sleep in with the babies. But I told him, I said, I want, I want to start getting up early so you know I can start getting things done in the morning that I, I want to do. And I just, it just feels good to know that you know, by 10 a.m., you've been very productive and your house is clean and all that, you know what I mean? And I, I mm. like that. And that was, that was my desire. Right. Um, and I had told him, please wake me up. Well, what happens the next morning? He tries to wake me up and I'm groggy as hell. And I'm like, Oh, I don't want to get up. No. And I end up falling back asleep. <laughs> and then I got up and I was like, He's like, yeah, this waking you up thing, mm -mm. you're not getting up <laughs> clearly. And I was like, yeah, I was just so tired this morning. So anyways, that day he injures himself at work and now he's in a space boot and on crutches and he can't even come upstairs. So he has to sleep on the couch. I have to do everything now. He can't physically do anything. So guess who had to get up? very early the next morning and get the kids situated and do all the things and I've had to do that the last three days since then even today it's Saturday <laughs> and I'm like oh my gosh like I really did manifest <laughs> what I said I wanted uh I would have liked him not to have you know injured himself to get there so, so that's <laughs> That's where we go into revision of like, ooh, let's make this a little easier next time. <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny because what do oh, you think Chase, says, he's got that boot on, otherwise I'd be chasing you around the house going, thanks a lot. 
until that boot comes off. I don't know. But, it, mm -hmm. you know, it's like Neville says, but when we ask, you know, have a desire and we walk in the skull and live in the state, we shouldn't be worried that we're hurting <laughs> yeah, yeah. somebody else. You know, it's like it's part of what the unseen reality has to concoct in order for something to manifest that we shouldn't. Be. But nonetheless, it's not what you would have ordered if you if you know that was the method this was going to happen. So talk yeah. about getting a kick in the yeah the boot in the <laughs> there you go. You know, but it, yeah, I think it it that's something that it, it's really <laughs> showing me that in hindsight that when I've desired something um sometimes I have a hesitancy thinking that something else is going to happen like like for instance I wanted a new SUV like at the beginning mm -hmm. of the year and then I find out I'm pregnant with my fourth so I have to like I don't have room to travel with my whole family <laughs> so that was, that's an example, like, why the hell did I have to get pregnant in order for me to get my desire? You know, like, like something dramatic, I guess I should say, like something dramatic has to happen, right? And that's what I would revise is no, it doesn't. It happens easily and everybody's fine. Like there's, and then we just go with the flow, like whatever does come of it, we work with it, you know? Yeah. And I have actually enjoyed taking care of Chase and I've actually enjoyed seeing just how how much I can do you know as a mother of four children now and so it's like hey but you know maybe that opened up another state for you mm -hmm. like a nurturing a larger kind of you know caring nurturing yeah. state the side of that was there because you're the mom but that kind of expansion yeah that you, did, and, you know and to say yeah. like you know, where, where I had doubts of my abilities before, clearly I can do those things, you know? Mm -hmm. And so more superpowers, isn't yeah. that great? There yeah. you go. That you didn't even know you had, you know, so, so that's, that's a beautiful thing. Thank you, so Chase. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Chase. So, <laughs> so Michelle, and you had, addition to the uh, you know, opportunity about your large, the larger home near you, but you also had a couple of major expansions. One is one is with your um, business, yeah, and the business that you run, and the other one is with your ch uh, children's book opportunities as an author. Um, uh oh, <laughs> yeah. I've got. It was so exciting. She she just yeah. froze. And she was so right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, she's frozen. Oh, she'll come back. Hopefully. Oh, he hello. Hi. Hi. Frozen. Hello. I'm back. <laughs> Yay! She's unfrozen. She thought out. Okay. <laughs> so. Um, after the episode that we had with 20 about business, success in business, I, um, I played with some of those things and so many opportunities come up. And um, I've now expanded to and set up a, the Happy Cleaner company. Um, and I've taken on, now, I now have three members of staff. Um, which is beautiful because it means that we are serving and helping loads of other people in the community, um, cleaning their houses, we're helping with their housekeeping needs, all of that stuff. Um, even when it came to who I was taking on to work with me, I wanted them to have certain backgrounds. Um, so maybe they'd been a carer for elderly people or something like that. I wanted them to be located in a certain area so that we could cover certain areas. I got absolutely everything I wanted. Um, I didn't even, I thought I was going to leave this sort of business and yet work kept coming in and I kept, and it's my fault because I had imagined, okay, that's fine. I had imagined, um, 
just seeing um, money in my bank account and going, oh, who's that from? <laughs> now, that's exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> and wow. And, and success, out. state of success. I, I, was I, going, love I wanted to mention that especially. It, yeah, total state of success. And not only that, but I've also got... Um, I've got my new book is a ready to go to my graphic designer. And so it should be out at the beginning of October. But now that's your, I just want to be clear. That's your fourth children's book, correct? My fourth children's book in a year. <laughs> wow. Um, and it's part of a series. Um, and another opportunity has come up where um my son wasn't happy at his football academy so he left and so I re I spoke to Charlie's football coaches and we are now setting up our very own football academy in our area wow <laughs> and so I'm also going to be director of of a football academy <laughs> and I never wow. imagined that for myself at all <laughs> But yeah, it's all coming in. And where you think, oh my God, I don't have the time. Actually, I totally have load, I totally have plenty of time to do it. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, all just from, it's just from that feeling and knowing of success. Um, over the weekend, I'm going to be looking at a print on demand that I had a brief, well, Tony Doyle pointed me in some directions. Um, when it comes to print on demand because he has a fantastic successful business and um, I'm going to be setting up um, a online printing shop for this with some of my using some of my illustrations from my books um, and I've already decided that the two comma coffee club are going to have the same <laughs> so I'm yeah like I've been doing some designs for t-shirts and mugs <laughs> for us. Yeah, and then we chatted the other day uh, because I kind of fell upon something that I enjoyed uh, in regards to cleaning and had talked with uh, a friend of mine and she was coming to me and saying, hey, you know, let's go into business together and do this. And I was like, you know, I had said earlier that day, if there was anybody in the world that I would partner with in a business, it would be her. And she literally showed up that same day saying, hey, let's, let's partner. And I mean, I was sitting there like, holy crap, wait, she really does want to because where her strengths are, you know, that's where my weaknesses are. We balance each other like so well that I thought this is like my ideal business partner and she wants mm. to do something and then me and Michelle talked because uh you know ever since then just my ideas were flowing and with you having a, a successful cleaning business now I'm like holy crap like this is doable and I actually like see this and so yeah like it's it's just get the hell out of your own way. Like the shit just yeah. flies at you as soon that, as you that shoot move. It aside. Yeah. Yeah. Just, so, so, yes, this, I'm sorry, go ahead. And I think also I took my cue from when we were doing Dream Driven Day and obvious Adams for marketing came up. And I kept getting all of this. I didn't want to do cleaning. I'll just get that straight. I did not want cleaning. And so I kept getting work doing cleaning because I kept thinking about it. And I thought, hang on a minute. How can I, how can I turn this around? This is obviously, there's a way of moving forwards with this. And so the Happy Cleaning Company was born and it's meant that I can help serve others. and give other people jobs um but the happy cleaning company is so obvious it's such an obvious name to me and obvious adams is all about how to market and set up something obvious yeah. yes yes i love that and uh, I, yeah i took a lot of cue from from obvious adams about my god how can i 
portray or how can I help somebody's pain obviously and so that's just how simply the happy cleaning company was born because it's about cleaning it nobody's happy doing cleaning who the hell wants to do their own housework I, I still don't want to do my own housework the the irony is I have cleaning ladies that I've hired every two weeks but yet I I do enjoy cleaning just I have so many wheels turning in my own house that I can't focus on just cleaning exactly. but it's I'll go over to somebody else's house and have that shit to perfection you know <laughs> exactly but you know there's a thing too where you can get so in the flow I've had experiences like that where I would I would back when I was you know taking a lot of yoga classes a long time ago in New York City and have a very powerful experience and feel so mellow and so good that when that I'd suddenly start cleaning at home and it didn't feel like a disturbance. You know, you can get in the flow of that yeah. as a state mm. and actually enjoy it. You don't want to make a career out of it, but you can enjoy it. Now, when you're doing it for somebody else, that's right. It's another experience entirely. It's another state sure. because you're doing it as a helping state. So yeah, right? it's a different, it's totally different, but, but, you see how, how that was a very fast manifesting that you've been thinking about it, but she, when she came to you at the, but on the other hand, we could also say if you had, uh, Lene, if you had been from the point where you first started thinking about your friend, wasn't immediate that she came to you. It needed time for that to ripen, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And that, if we're talking about time, because there was no timeline I put on it, it showed, she showed up, you know, texting me like two, three hours later, you know, I wasn't even thinking about her at that point. It was a, oh my gosh, like she would be a great business partner to, to be with. And then she's like, Hey, I have this idea and let's partner and da, 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 da. And I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> holy crap. Okay. And I was, and, and of course I'm like, yes, of course, you know, I'm able to immediately respond to her because I had already planned on it, <laughs> you know? So, but I can see how, if I was like, oh, I need her. I need her as my business partner because of these reasons. And I need to find a way to present this to her in order for her to accept it. And do you see how that feels so, oh, uh, like, I don't want to fucking do that. Mm -hmm. So it was more just enjoying the thought of what a great person to partner with. And then she did all the legwork for me. She came to me with the idea and she came to me wanting to partner. And but I see, didn't have isn't to that do anything. But isn't that a perfect example of it's all you pushed out? Yeah. Because she just reflected back to you yeah. right there. Yeah, exactly. And then I think of all the people oh. that reflect the bullshit in my brain about them <laughs> and they stay far away. <laughs> so that's the, the other side of the coin. <laughs> yeah exactly but that, that also works. guys mm -hmm. one of the ladies that i've taken on to clean for me we worked together um at a primary school um probably about three or four years ago and i was thinking about setting up or i did set uh -oh. up a cleaning business then but it didn't are you still there? Yeah. Hello. Hello? Yeah, you froze. Hello? Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi. Can you hear me now? Hello. Yeah. Hello? Can you hear me? Hello. Hello. Yes. Can you hear me now? Hello? Yes. Yes. Oh, good. Yes. Yeah, sorry. So four years. I keep freezing whenever I talk because I get too excited. Uh -huh. <laughs> Well, when, so three or four years ago, I set up a business that wasn't very successful. We, me and my, the partner that I had, we went separate ways. But when I was setting it up and um, getting cleaning jobs in, she actually said to me, listen, Michelle, 
when you properly set up your company, I'm going to come and work for you. And wow. we left it. And she worked, I was a teacher, I was a teaching assistant and she worked in the school kitchen. And it was really funny because I've now taken her on to work for my company. <laughs> and she reminded me of it. She said, Shaw, do you remember that time when I said I was going to work for you? And I said, and here we are. <laughs> nice. All right. That was three, four years ago. So I think uh, we need to wrap this up. I have uh, babies to tend to and purples and you know all kinds of stuff so uh <laughs> i um uh, this was oh. this was a great great topic I, so i'm so thankful that once again me and valerie decided we were going to do a show today and topic given to us we didn't have to do anything so, exactly thank you marushka for that awesome yes uh, yes those awesome questions and and a great letter yeah so if anybody has any um, topics they would like to discuss or questions that you have, uh, feel free to reach out to one of us, post in the group if you're comfortable with that, of course. And we will get your permission before we blast your name on here, by the way. We did ask that <laughs> we could use the post. Um, so don't, don't be fearful. We're just going to like blast your shit out here on YouTube land <laughs> and live on Facebook. But um, yeah, so reach out to us and we'll be back to our normal schedule at some point once, you know, we get the wheels back turning the way, the way they should. And however that unfolds, we'll let you know, but um, make sure you check us out on TikTok, YouTube, um, on Anchor or Spotify, whichever per preference you have. Um, join our Facebook group if you haven't already. And does anybody have anything, any last words of encouragement before we go? Keep, imagine, keep giving life to the lovely. Yes. Wow. Yes. And remember to enjoy yourself and have fun because that's what life's about. The experiences, right? Bye. So, all right, everybody enjoy your Saturday, Sunday, whatever day it is for you on whatever side of the world. Goodbye. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye.